Yes, from Wrocław. So, so it's our pleasure to, to, to meet two most uh, important women in the world of architectural organization. Uh, so uh, thank you for for you for 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 for, you, for, for joining us and Boris, the stage is yours. Please. Uh... Thank, you. thank you very much and uh, good morning, everyone. There is um, um, thank you for taking a moment to learn about the perspective of new European Bauhaus, the future of the architectural profession from the president of both most important architectural organizations. I'm convinced that this time won't be wasted. Uh, my name is Boris Czarakchev. I'm an architect from Poland, uh, more precisely from Krakow, a uh, city which was listed on the first list of UNESCO 45 years ago. So, and um, right now I'm also the member of the Executive Board of Architecture Council of Europe. We would like to start this uh, webinar in, in the second semester today with a conversation with two ladies of the most important people in the world of architecture. Uh, conversation with the president of ACE and UIA. And uh, just to make you familiar with the both organization, International Union of Architects was founded in 1948 and UIA is Federation of the National Professional Organizations working to unify architects, influence public policies and advance architecture in service to needs of society. From the other hand, Architecture Council of Europe was uh, founded in 1919 in uh, Treviso in uh, Italy. So that's another country we are meeting. Uh, well, and uh, it's um, it consists of 43 member organizations, which are regulatory and professional representative bodies from European Union member states, UK, Switzerland, and Norway. And ACE aims to help advance architecture and maintain its quality. So, in a context of the changes that are taking place in our profession, the voice of two ladies elected this year, this year, <laughs> uh, as a president of the most important architectural organization seems to be very, very important. Moreover, moreover, uh, this is a probably the first time, I don't know, I, I'm just uh, thinking that's the first time that we have uh, had two women simultaneously leading both organizations at the same time. So the women power and also <laughs> the gender changes which are which we are facing, that's a good time. And uh, let me remind you that the uh, webinar is a joint activity between ACE and Faculty of Architecture and Wroclaw uh, University of Technology. This uh, activity has led to creation of the network between universities from Lithuania, Czech Republic, Poland, Hungary, Romania, Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Italy, Germany, Spain, and Ireland. Maybe Switzerland will join us. Together, we are developing a program consisting of short lectures uh, where architects from different countries tell you, young architects to whom the program is dedicated about their understanding of New European Bauhaus. However, we want to start the second series with an important voice, the voice, as I mentioned, of two presidents of a, a friendly organization. That's that's very important. Uh, and our guest to get today is uh, Regina Gauthier, president of uh, UIA, and Ruth Schagemann, president of Architecture Council of Europe. Good morning, lady. Thank you for your commitment and uh, uh, helping us to create the webinar project. Uh, let me introduce you. Uh, Regina Gauthier uh, is uh, a president of UIA. Previ previously, she was a co-director, a UIA International Competitions Commission and uh, president Swiss Conference of Architects. Regina, Regina is a practicing architect uh, and co-owner with her husband of the office in Bern, as I, as I remember. She was um, also visiting professor, and uh, she has a very big experience from both sides of uh, uh, mm, architecture competitions. And uh, uh, moreover, she was president of the Swiss Conference of Architects. From the other hand, Hendy Ruth Schagemann is coming from Stuttgart. And what joined the, in the history of these two ladies, she also founded the 
architect's office and vice versa architecture uh, with her husband. <laughs> well, and um, from uh, 2016 up till now, Ruth is uh, uh, the member of the board. Moreover, from the, for the second term, she was re-elected this year for the president of the uh, of the uh, Architecture Council of uh, Europe. And uh, uh, since January, she is also say, uh, serving as a managing um, managing director of the Brussels office of the Federal Chamber of the German Architects. And what's very important in our conversation, she represents Hayes in the uh, 2023 Davos Baukultur Annual Steering Committee. That's very important. So mm. we have a very competent ladies uh, meeting together uh, and I will stop <clears throat> just introducing, sorry for a long introduction, but it is the very beginning of our second term. Well, ladies, uh, um, the world is changing. The, we, we, we have a 21st century, which, which, which scares us, uh, with uh, also uh, make us a lot of hope. And um, in the recent years, the discussion about architecture has been taking place at the high political level in Europe, architecture has been recognized as the culture uh, creating element. Uh, and uh, as we mentioned, the Davos Declaration indicates the right of the every European to live in a high quality environment. As we know, Europe is very diverse. In many countries, Bau Kultur has not been adopted as a policy direction. And uh, what do you think are the, the task of facing your organization to make the dialogue unified on in different parts of 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 of, of the world, different parts in Europe? What uh, are the social values in particular should we pay attention to in the discussion about the European Bauhaus at the level of uh, European level, maybe maybe not only. But uh, uh, as I read, uh, you, Regina, you, you already answered a little bit about this question uh, uh, as a president uh, message to COP28, because uh, you, you, you just wrote to everyone, architects are challenged to design places capable of generating a better and more friendly society, as well as buildings that contribute to the well-being well-being of the people that use them and respond to environmental changes. Regina, what's your point of view? Well, I think that uh, uh, we are confronted with all the challenges. We are trying to position again ourselves as architects and uh, we don't have only an aesthetic a responsibility. There is a swift from the iconic buildings <laughs> that was perhaps 20 years ago to uh, uh, increase the conscience uh, uh, of our other responsibilities, which are social, uh, ethical, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, political as well. So I think that uh, this is a very important uh, um, uh, Swift, perhaps, uh, uh, also for uh, directing what we should be doing. Uh, very important in your question is perhaps, uh, uh, you know, the which social values you asked, uh, which so social values should we uh, concentrate on? I think uh, social cohesion is the first one. Uh, uh, and this is very difficult. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, identity. People need identity. And, uh, of course, the challenge is to do that with diversity. <laughs> so I think that is uh, perhaps uh, the little... Uh, uh, the, the, the new, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, direction of the profession uh, in front of all uh, these challenges. Uh, we cannot just concentrate on our pleasure, which is perhaps the aesthetic satisfaction. Oh my God, so I leave the university and I have to learn all the time. 
<laughs> but that doesn't mean that we don't have that responsibility too. <laughs> well, Ruth, and uh, uh, do you agree with Regina or maybe you have a, any contradiction? <laughs> Well, it's very difficult to disagree. <laughs> Let's say on on uh, on this matter, and um, I I think I just um, want to really keep in mind uh, in this discussion that uh, if we look at architecture, we have to come back to a bit to our roots. Architecture is um, regional, no? meaning that um, you mentioned it, Boris, we are discussing about diversity in Europe. And if we look at architecture in Europe, it is diverse and it should remain diverse. And if we have this concept of diversity, um, which uh, Regina already meant, mentioned, it's about culture, it's about social um, values, uh, it's about identity, uh, identification and places of belonging. But that also means that we have to take into consideration also um, uh, construction ways which are regional, materials that are regional, craftsmanship that are regional. And this does not mean that we should not be innovative because innovation is really important, but um, we should um, really look at the values that already exist. Because if we um, look throughout Europe, we have also different um, levels of um, development. We have also uh, different, uh, the people live different, the people um, socialize different. And um, if we are speaking of um, beautiful, inclusive and sustainable places as the new European Bauhaus claims, or um, the important values that are um, in in the topic of Baukultur and the Davos um, uh, and the Davos Declaration, then it really becomes clear that we have to look what is in the region, what exists there, because this is the only way how we can really develop um, uh, the, that people identify themselves with the space in which they live or in the space which they uh, interact. And it's not only architecture, it's about planning. It's also about um, public spaces, private spaces. It's about, yes, everything that tackles our um, daily lives. And it's nothing abstract because it, 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 it's really nicely said, it's a matter as architecture is a matter of public interest. But what does that mean? It's about people. It's about people living together in a dignified way and architects can contribute through solutions and architecture and urban planning are solutions. And I think that's maybe um, uh, we, we have to reflect um, on this to add something additional to what Regina said, because I absolutely agree, Regina, with what, what you mentioned. Whoa, so it means when I'm, young architect i should i should remember that maybe that's uh, that's my profession is not about the creating the space but how to create the space to solve the the, the public and the social problems so that's a very new challenge that's a, it's a absolutely different perspective of our profession i wouldn't yes. say that it is new it, it has gotten forgotten a little exactly i don't think it is new it no. has been always in the basis of our, uh, I mean, education as architects, uh, but it has, you know, architecture has also waves. It goes in one direction and comes back and goes. So that is, uh, uh, but it is nothing new. We all, I mean, it is uh, an applied uh, uh, art. Architecture is an applied art in the interest of society, in the interest of people. Uh, and this uh, is the basis uh, from the beginning. Well, it, so you are you are you are right that the pragmatic of of the uh, of uh, of architecture profession is not changing. Well, uh, in uh, nineteen in two, uh, nineteen uh, ninety five. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. was was first uh, PQD directive and uh, it was up the, upgraded uh, in the beginning of this century and it is written a very 
precise definition, a very good definition of architecture profession, that architects, in fact, is a translator, translator of the social and human needs to the technical language. Do you agree with it? I wouldn't say the technical no, language. But you are the, you are, yeah. It is the ability to translate needs into spatial solutions. Actually, yeah. that is the core of our profession. And needs uh, both of all sides. I mean, needs of the of the users, needs of the clients as well. <laughs> and all this in a, in a context uh, of uh, reality, economical reality, reality, I mean, context of the place and so on. So it is actually um, somehow, it is a translation into space solutions. Well, yes. I remember, yes, sorry, sorry, Ruth wanted. Yes, and I think um, uh, also the architects, they are those who um, can understand the different parameters. And out of these different parameters, they develop um, and and now we really also have to think about, it's not only about crea creating something new, so uh, the new building, but really also looking at what already exists, the existing building stock, and, um, and also um, analyzing and uh, looking at what we have and how it can be transformed for the new needs, no? because sometimes buildings um, have overcome their need um, for that moment when they were designed. And nowadays we can reflect and see, okay, maybe um, something where in former times people were working uh, like industry or fabrics now can be transformed to living, no? because we are lo looking for more housing, more um, space for people to live in um, cities or villages. So, um, and in my opinion, uh, the architects, um, with their knowledge and you mentioned the pqd it's about also um an education and regina said uh, we have been educated for this and we are still educated for that <laughs> and um this quality of education leads at the end to uh good hopefully good solutions and to baukultur which we cannot know in beforehand we hope to work into that direction but the next generation will challenge us and say okay they did a good job or maybe they even say mm, they tried but they didn't have uh, uh, the right outcome so uh, to be judged is going to be done by the next generation yeah but but i i would like to go on with this uh uh, point you just uh, headline uh, wrote about uh, uh, reuse, rebuild, uh, recover, and whatever, whatever. But we we shouldn't forget about the the high quality baukultur, yeah. And uh, I remember that uh, uh, well, we have a uh, national uh, contact points. Uh, uh, which were established uh, according to the directive and commission. The Davos quality system has been developed. The, the dialogue about European Bauhaus is, however, different in different regions of, of Europe. You, you know it, yeah? But um, it, the, the New European Bauhaus, this Davos quality system, it's it doesn't ref have any reflection in a public procurement directive, single oh, market right. directive. That's that's that, that's that's a pity. And I remember wh when we were together with uh, Ruth and you, Regina, were also on UI con Congress in Madrid, and uh, Ruth was a little bit disappointed because uh, she had a panel about quality and. <laughs> She ha she got a lot of complaints from developers, but it costs, but it costs, but it's too too expensive. Well, so how how do we convince people that uh, quality may cost more, but as a long term investment, it's it's more uh, profitable. Ruth, what? I, I I remember you were very disappointed with this, but, but <laughs> knowing you, you made a lesson your homework. Just tell us. Well, first of all, I want to underline that say architectural competition are the um the way for quality development. No, so um that's so it is uh in in the competition, um the quality is 
in inserted there so you cannot really say um, it's not part of it uh, what i think is important and this is something that um, especially in the field of public procurement that um, architects want to compete on quality base and not on price base no so um, this is something that uh, has to be kept in mind if um, public procurement or competitions. It's about good solutions. So this should be um, the core activity. And um, another point we have to take into, consider into consideration, high quality architecture can be wrongly understood. No, high quality does not mean it has to be expensive. Um, high quality we are uh, discussing, and you did your introduction here, is about social values, environmental values, cultural values. And these values, get to get them translated into architecture, urban planning, public space, is not always needed to be expensive. And we have these examples. And we see in architectural awards, which are already also changing and awarding um, architects who find incredible, wonderful solutions for social housing, for example. No? And um, I, I think this is something to, to be kept in mind. It's not always um, expensive, especially not if you look at a long-term approach, because it is too expensive not to do so. <laughs> That is what we are paying at the moment for the next generation. And if we want to live in um, our uh, in, in this nature that happily in part still exists and we want to keep it like that, we have to change. There is no solution there. And um, not doing it, that's the expensive part. Thank you. And Regina, please tell us from your perspective, uh, looking to the public procurements and all well, the architecture contests, how does it work? Well, first of all, I want to say that uh, 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 Ruth points out a very essential uh, point in the discussion. Quality is not to be extravagant. <laughs> it is not uh, uh, associated with a luxury or something that is expensive. This is perhaps a, a a problem that we have because of the use uh, in the marketing world of quality, you know. but it is not that. Quality in architecture uh, is uh, independent from, from, from the cost factor, for sure, uh, uh, basically. But uh, yes, your, your question, uh, I mean, your question is how we can uh, uh, bring uh, to the you know to to the public uh, uh, profit that uh, uh, to invest uh, in quality in and uh, uh, for a long term. I mean, this is a really important question, and uh, I think uh, the first factor is it needs it's a long process of education. First of all, second, it is. Uh, uh, of course, what is being done in the last years, we try to raise the awareness in the population because uh, this must be become a demand of the population and not, you know, uh, uh, of course, also of, of all stakeholders, uh, uh, the, the, the building industry inclusive, but of course the politicians and the public sector. The public sector has here to play a paradigmatic role. They must do that uh, because they can do it. And they can do it in their practice, but they can and they should also do it by implementing the, uh, um, uh, by, by embedding, if you want, in public procurement relative provisions because uh, it is very good. I mean, we have to work on convincing people, on educating people, on convincing all factors, all actors. But at the end of the day, we must use also legislation to impose it. I think we have to work on all three ways. This is the only way to do it. Well, but, uh, and the one influences the other. If people ask it, then the legislation will do it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it uh, it leads us to, back to the to the that definition that our profession is 
lifelong learning. Uh, I prefer long life learning. Well, but um, <clears throat> it means that education becomes as a very important point in our profession. Uh, it's not only we we can't just end with a with a university uh, knowledge. We have to develop ourselves, yeah. and uh, the twenty first century presents us with a new task. One of the main issues is the challenge of the climate protection, energy sufficiency. <clears throat> the challenges makes it necessary uh, for us uh, architects to do with a new. This increasingly uh, architecture is not connected with uh, creating uh, architecture icons, as we told, but uh, but uh, feeling, understanding, solving social problems. So, uh, how do you think? What direction do we are going with the profession? What direction should we follow in education? Bec and I will use once again that what you to what you told uh, Ruth after the Venice conference when you mm -hmm. came to the board meeting. You you told maybe architecture is not longer about architecture. Mm. <laughs> It was very brave, but it touches me. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can change your mind. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I believe that um, because you mentioned the challenges, no, the challenges that we are facing and also the discussion in architecture, what we are having at the moment is not new. It is already old. No, architects, colleagues have been discussing sustainability since ages. <laughs> no, but what has changed now, and I think this is um, the big um, paradigm sh shift that policymakers on European level finally consider yeah. um, that these uh, needs that are uh, ahead of us are facts and that architecture um, plays a role in it. Uh, the construct, the um, built environment plays an important role in it and it has to be addressed um, because before we were only discussing about mobility, how um, are we more mobile, less mobile, drive with a ride with a bike better or uh, eat less meat, all these things. No? And now suddenly um, the built environment is in the focus of the discussion Discussion and this has been long needed. So I think there's a focus shift. And um, the second is, and this you hear now more and more often in the discussion with the young people, that they study architecture, but they think, do I really have to build something? Or um, do I use something that exists? Or what um, perspective does architecture um, um, take on board, let's say, for the for the future. And um, I think this this reflection is uh, is really important and is um, needed, especially from the new generation. What do they think? Uh, in which direction are we heading? And there are lots of young people who say, I study architecture, but I don't want to build. So uh, imagine if someone would have told me this 25 years ago, I would say, okay, 30 years ago, no, you are insane. I'm studying architecture to build, but this is not um, not the case anymore. And I think that's uh, important to reflect what do we have and in which direction can we um, develop. So, yeah. Well, thank you. And Regina, how does it look from your maybe more worldwide perspective than well, on Europe? I don't Is know. The same? If, I don't know if on that, uh, I mean, there are big differences between the European countries. But if you see the globe, there are even more. <laughs> we are very homogeneous. I mean, Europe is a quite homogeneous region in comparison with the rest. I wouldn't answer that from the, you know, from the global point of view. Uh, I, I much rather, I would say there is another shift also that uh, in the consumer, if you take population, as being consumers of architecture. The shift has happened there. They will participate now in the uh, design of their environment. And this is a very important uh, uh, change. They are not, I mean, they are not just consumers. Of course, you know, I'm saying that now perhaps with the European experience because 
in other in some parts other parts of the world they may be just consumers because of the needs you know <laughs> they, yeah. we are in yeah. a position in the european union where the consumer has requests and wants to participate and this is this is actually the good sign that means that the awareness <laughs> has worked <laughs> the raising of awareness has worked but now we have to find solutions how to how to satisfy these needs with participation also of the people because people must feel responsible for their environment otherwise the environment is void Mm. Well, and I, yeah, I, I think that some 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 lectures uh, during the Copenhagen UI Congress were about this. What you did, just uh, telling us right now. Sorry, Ruth. Yes, I just wanted to um, uh, underline what uh, Regina said because I think uh, with uh, Regina, what you what you just mentioned, it's really about um, uh, the demand of the people. No, it's uh, not anymore um, top down. It's really bottom up and. And um, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, really mm, interesting. And maybe the needs are different. Also, the needs maybe in, in Europe are different depending on the people. But uh, the values are maybe similar. No, What do we want? We want to, um, yeah, what values do we fight for? And this could be something what unifies us. For sure. Well, thank, thank you, thank you. But well, we are we are leading to the point that uh, new technologies uh, that what uh, what uh, what some sometimes make scary architects mm -hmm. it's uh, artificial intelligence because it is already predicted that some a uh, some um, professions will disappear. Uh, will this the first? Uh, which will happen in twenties of this uh, end of the twenties of this century. And uh, do you think uh, that we have uh, the chance as uh, architects to uh, survive as a protect pro uh, profession, or should be should we should we be fear of artificial intelligence? What's 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 your uh, point of view. Maybe we'll, we'll ask Regina first. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is a hard one. Well, the, I think that the fear is justified at this moment because uh, we are not sure of having the control. I think uh, uh, any technology, uh, uh, if we are, if we use it, if we can use it, if we can uh, command it for what we need, is good, but if technology takes over and commands us, that's a diff this kind of situation uh, is quite different. So I, th I, I, the fear is totally actually uh, justified at the moment. But I want to say, uh, I, I, last week I heard uh, uh, artificial intelligence had been able to reproduce uh, the voice. I think it was Leonard Cohen, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, somebody from that uh, generation, uh, a song. And, you know, they reproduced it. So it was uh, fantastic. I tell you, I knew that song. It didn't give me any emotion. Oh. And I think that I, I was very happy that it didn't give me any emotion because perhaps we will be still able to recognize <laughs> what is human and what is not <laughs> and what is artificial. But I think that uh, it is a challenge. Uh, it is like, you know, at the beginning of digitalization, our, uh, our uh, profession was uh, uh, quite scared. I mean, what? How are we going to use uh, design with computers and so on? And uh, uh, of course, uh, even there, uh, you. I can tell you uh, that our creativity cannot be programmed. I mean, in my experience as architect, it is the sketches that 
very fast by hand that gave me the solutions. And once I had that, then we could design <laughs> with our computers. And I think this part uh, belongs still to the human being. Uh, and I hope that uh, uh, this creation, this creative uh, uh, component will not disappear. But artificial intelligence threatens us because uh, I, uh, because of the fear of losing the control. But if we can control, if we can program, then it will be like any other technology, perhaps uh, in our service. I fully share your feelings, but you know, we have a discussion about artificial intelligence on the level of uh, 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 Architecture Council of Europe, and we are diverse, are, aren't we, Ruth? Yeah, yeah, it's not so easy to get everyone, uh, yes, uh, heading because, um, as you as you mentioned, Boris, no, you can fear it, no, and you can hide, or you can um, uh, employ be, it, let's say, aware of it, no, and see as Regina said, so, just described, uh, be of, aware of it and um, maintain the let's say, um, the, the, be part of the development, no? So I would say fear is a bad counselor, but mm -hmm. what is important is that the um, profession is prepared, no? Um, prepared for the change because the change will come. It's, um, you can, we will not um, make a difference. Uh, artificial intelligence is, is there. It will develop quick. Um, in my opinion, I, I would even go one step further than Regina. I would say, the design is going to make the change in the future because these things that um, are, let's say, tick boxes um, in the offices, like uh, developing details or replicating the details once, once, once again of windows, doors, whatever, this can be really nicely done, I think, through artificial um, intelligence. But the final decision, and as Regina said, it's sometimes also about emotions, the final decision in which direction the design will go is done and is still going to be done in future um, by the architect. And But we have to take care of this process because um, it's also about uh, democracy. It's about, um, it is about uh, big data. It's about um, who owns um, the knowledge. Um, it's about Urheberrecht, um, uh, I now forgot how it's uh, called. It, in, uh, intellectual uh, property, intellectual property. Intellectual Authors property, uh, exactly. No, so these are important topics that uh, we as architects have to be a part of the development, and um, these um, um, we we shouldn't let it be taken out of our hands. But um, I am very positive. I believe if we as a profession are prepared, I'm sure that we will um, also uh, be a master. But it will change. No, some things will not be done anymore by um, architects. And maybe it's even good because who really, no one was fond of uh, doing the uh, detail design in 100 doors. So uh, it's like, well, this can be given to someone else. And if we look at, um, for example, in uh, everything what has to do with language at the moment, you can really the, the short version summaries are done so quick by artificial intelligence, but everything has the same value. So it's without emotion, you know. <laughs> without the <laughs> so uh, you get great text. Yes, it's written well, but um, doesn't really, it's not poesy. So um, I believe the architects. Um, well, AI is uh, learning, learning, and uh, well, who knows, but... Uh... <laughs> Anyway, but uh, Boris, it, Boris, yeah. just want to, this learning is important. From whom do they learn? Yeah. From us, <laughs> exactly. No, so it's from us. And um, the the better the data is, and the data is, um, let's say, can we can be the designer, uh, not the designer. We can be the curators of this data. This has to be maintained in the hands of the architect. If someone else does it, then it can be really dangerous and difficult. Absolutely. And I think that for both uh, 
organization is not only challenge but also to the goal to be alliance in this uh, work of course yeah uh, well um uh, let me go to 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 issue which is uh very interesting for me uh, due to the fact that, that I come from Poland and next to to my country it's a, a big disaster which mm -hmm. is a war and we don't know what will happen but uh, we 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 uh, we are very crossing fingers for for Ukrainians to win and we wish them to do that but uh, as uh, Václav told me they have uh, uh, 80 billion tons of uh, of damages uh, construction, which were to be um, uh, used in any way. Uh, well, and the problem is really how to rebuild the Ukraine. But uh, well, we know that uh, the European funds would be used for rebuild. But do you think that new European Bauhaus could be one of the criteria for mm -hmm. rebuilding of Ukraine. It's very important. It's very important for us as we are talking about the philosophy which we switched, turned, not switched, they are switched, turned in Europe only from economy also to the human uh, beings needs. And we, 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 our goal is a well done and high quality environment. Can we rebuild Ukraine using uh, the philosophy of an European Bauhaus. What's what's your opinion, Regina? Well, certainly, theoretically, yes. The, the question is if practically and politically it will be possible. But theoretically, of course. And uh, I mean, uh, we know uh, already from what I uh, from from uh, co colleagues from Ukraine. Uh, that some firms are already buying land and destroyed areas in order to develop them. So we have a big problem if uh, if this kind of reconstruction gets to be the object of profit, <laughs> then it will be very difficult. And uh, uh, there is another factor that is, of course, uh, related to that. It is after such catastrophes, it has to go fast, and fast is never good. So uh, if we want to help our colleagues in Ukraine and in other parts of the world, I'm thinking also of Gaza today, yeah. for instance. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, we, uh, what is important is that they, they already work on planning uh, codes that will have conditions that it will be not possible not to develop according to our Baukultur criteria. But it is politically difficult. Ruth, you and, have been to, to, to Ukraine on this uh, uh, during this war. You you could uh, you, you you had this possibility to talk about uh, the rebuild of Ukraine with the Ukrainians uh, leaving, not going outside by leaving you you met them what 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 are your feelings? Can we use New European Bauhaus as a criteria? First, first of all, um, there there is exactly this um, uh, situation what uh, what Regina just um, described. No, and they are aware of it, and um, in parallel, they try to implement as much as possible um, to have, let's say, a framework set um, as soon as the situation arises, hopefully um, soon. And um, I think the values of the new European Bauhaus are really important because uh, we and but it's also about the Davos Alliance. It's about Davos Declaration because it's about participation. It's about participation. It's about uh, good um, good design processes, um, especially throughout uh, competitions, and. Um, Therefore, and we should, but we always have to be aware that it's not us delivering something, it's really working together, no? So that the colleagues in the Ukraine can select 
what is uh, what can they implement from our side? Maybe better not implement the faults um, that we are doing already in in Europe. So um, this is one point. And what um, and exactly it's about uh, the tools of master planning, um, but it's also the the um, regulation on how to do competitions. Um, this is something they are working on at the moment. It's about maybe also change in education education. And um, the other thing is to uh, get it um, through all the levels of administration, no? because um, it's not only about the government, but it's also about local administration, um, so that this knowledge is there. And uh, But nevertheless, I fear that the economical pressure would be so big that um, I'm um, yes, I'm a bit afraid that at a certain point, uh, the quick construction will take over the quality. And um, that's a big, it remains an issue. It it's only a big loss. Everyone tries, everyone tries at the moment the best um, to, to put things in place uh, to at least have a, a bit of a um, hope that it might not lead to invasive uh, construction in the Ukraine. Yeah. Well, well, Ruti, you had several meetings with uh, uh, our president, also on the line. You, 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 you met. Uh, you are in contact with Ruth Reinstein. You know, you are aware that uh, that the uh, roundtable, uh, new European Bauhaus roundtable, uh, consists also people out from Europe. But uh, in your opinion, is it any change uh, to to have a uh, a uh, new European Bauhaus as a something which we can export from Europe. Again, I wouldn't say export because <laughs> it, it's uh, it becomes a bit um, colonialistic, you know, to export something. So um, I would be careful with that. But uh, what it does, it uh, really aggregates uh, values um, in a good way, you know. And these values can, for example, be applied for European fundings, uh, like uh, European calls. No? We have the URI Herit project, or we have um, um, uh, the, the project on, on competitions, where the values of uh, the new European Bauhaus are the foundation to develop these calls. And I think, therefore, it's important. And uh, we can discuss these values with our colleagues in, in Ukraine, but it's up to them to then decide uh, what can they take and what would they rather not take so um yeah but this discussion is um of high interest and one important um point there is about heritage um maintaining um again identification and um how do the citizens of the ukraine then really define what is there what is going to be their heritage and how to be rebuilt heritage that is basically absurd in itself no because heritage is either there or not and but if it's destroyed you cannot really rebuild but something has to be there to find again the um, identity and i think that's a very very interesting ongoing discussion at the moment and especially also with the um, architecture from the Soviet times, no? um, in, in the discussion with the colleagues, the architecture in the Soviet times is basically neglected. They don't want to, to yeah, they don't want to keep it, but it's part of their identity. So um, this is something they can only develop amongst themselves and we can be um, a partner there, um, but these decisions really have to be, uh, be done by the colleagues and um, the citizens um, in in the Ukraine. Thank you. And Regina, do you think that the new European Bauhaus's idea could be adopted in another part of the world? Well, of course. Uh, the the uh, there is a problem with the with the word Baukultur uh, that is difficult uh, even. Uh, among uh, uh, German-speaking people, <laughs> but you can understand that uh, it is quite uh, um, difficult. Uh, uh, this has created some, I would say, psychological difficulty about it. But when we talk about the, the philosophy behind it, there is no problem. 
I can also tell you that two weeks ago, the uh, UAE Council uh, decided to become uh, partners of the uh, Davos Alliance, Baukultu Alliance. So uh, we are going to actively, uh, we promote the same things, exactly. We promote holistic approach, we promote quality, uh, uh, all, uh, you know, all what is written under, yeah. understood under Baukultu, we promote it as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, Perhaps we don't need to use the word <laughs> when we are talking about it in other uh, continents, but uh, uh, what is important is to promote the content. And we are, we are doing it, and we are going to do it more actively as well. well. But there is, excuse me, there is one thing I wanted to come back about heritage. Uh, it is, uh, we, we have perhaps, uh, we have to perhaps study history a little better uh, on that topic. Uh, in Europe, we have been extremely protective uh, in the last perhaps 30, uh, after the Second World War, <laughs> let's say that, in a very protective way. Uh, when you see, uh, for instance, uh, in Asia, some uh, uh, temple, uh, what do you call it? Temples uh, are, are being rebuilt identically again after I don't know 40, 50 years when they they are not anymore anymore in good condition. It, it is something that needs to be uh, analyzed. You know, uh, we have uh, uh, the attitude. You know, to to uh, yeah, it is a problem of of. Uh, I mean, heritage is everything that has happened to a country. Everything. So uh, sometimes there are chapters that you don't like, <laughs> and chapters that you prefer. But you have had this kind of interpretations also in archaeology. You know, you, uh, it is a very interesting topic. I cannot really debate on it right now, but I want to say that perhaps our understanding of heritage should be rediscussed. Well, thank you for this word. Uh, uh, I must tell you that uh, we are preparing conference together with Europa Nostra about heritage <laughs> and the uh, New European Bauhaus, which will be in November next year in Krakow, in my town, so I kindly uh, invite you to join us during this conference. Uh, well, uh, I hope that our meeting was uh, not only sustainable, um, beautiful, but for sure was to get together. But uh, um, I must confess, we are, just frankly speaking, we are uh, recording this conversation before the Christmas, but we will post it in the very beginning of uh, January. Um, I, I, I would just use this pro uh, possibility and ask uh, Regina, you first as a as a president of UIA, what's your message to architects for 2024? My message to architects for 2024 uh, to, to open our vision to learn to see things through different angles. I think that is my message. Thank you very much. And Ruth, what's your, your message to architects in, for 2024? I believe uh, to come back uh, to our origin um, and and reflect on uh, what we um, discover as a uh, the 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 special the specialty of a place um, and reflect our design on what exists in the surrounding and um, coming back to our roots and be aware of our roots. Yeah, roots are very important. Thank you very much. 
I really, it was a great pleasure for me to, to have this conversation with you both. And uh, I think I, I, I'm, I think that architecture is in good hands, both in, <laughs> in Europe, you know, in a world. Yeah, well, and um, uh, I'm really very happy that you have uh, the common understanding of a lot of uh, things we were discussing to get today. And, uh, and this um, this conversation, our, our conversation showed me how much we have to do. What are still active challenges before, which we has to face, uh, have to face in uh, in our organizations? And I think that uh, um, we have to just keep on going because, uh, as I told architects, we are the champions. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, it was a pleasure also to discuss with you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. The, the same from my side. Thank you very, very much uh, for the invitation. And Regina, also from my side, it's always lovely to meet you and uh, yeah. to discuss with you. First time that two Germans speaking. Women architects. Thank you very, very much uh, for the invitation. And Regina, also from my side, it's always lovely to meet you and uh, to discuss with you. I'm really very happy that I found something which joined you. It's this uh, a family, architecture family business. <laughs>